selection Sunday? Uh, what were kind of the uh, emotions going through you at that moment? I think we were just really anxious and they certainly made us wait till the very end of the show to hear our name called and seen on the screen. So the group was just really excited. They were waiting in anticipation and uh, they thought it was really cool to have you know, the cameras in there and be able to talk to the other teams before the show. So they were just really pumped and excited for that opportunity. That's something they've been dreaming about for a long time. And what was it? Um, what, what did you kind of think about your drawing there? Did you did you think that you guys uh, should have hosted or, or what was the deal with that? No, I don't think we were in a position to host. I think that um, hosting would be a different level of pressure for a, a first time in NCAA tournament team. So I think going on the road was was good for us. Um, the draw itself geographically was not that desirable. I think we were a little bit surprised that we're being sent that far. Um, but, you know, we were in the tournament and that's all that matters. So we're just really excited about the opportunity to start our postseason. And if it takes a couple of flights to get there, then so be it. We'll get there. We'll get a practice in and we'll get acclimated uh, um, in the Northwest. Stefan, go ahead. I'm kind of talking about the draw there a little bit. How do you, maybe with your staff, kind of, you know, use the workload? Are you guys only, you know, looking at Hawaii field right now? Is anyone looking at, you know, Washington or Brown and, and who you could face in a, in a next round matchup? Uh, what we're presenting to our team is only Hawaii. Um, obviously, behind the, behind the scenes with our staff, um, I think I have bags and puffs under my eyes because we've been watching a lot of video and staying up late and there's been a lot of preparation behind the scenes. So we've, we've watched some Washington. We've looked at some Brown. Um, we'll be ready for anybody that we draw, but right now we're just all eyes, all focus on Hawaii. I think we just have to focus on this first round match before we look past anybody, but we're definitely, we've watched a ton of video on them and um, they're obviously very different than the SEC teams that we've played in conference. So it's a little bit of shifting gears to prepare for a team like this. I know you talked a bit about the, on the selection show, just how cool it was for you guys to, to kind of be, you know, the first team in program history to do this. But at, at the same time, I guess, what, what do you kind of teach players who have never played um, in an environment like this before? It's just another game. We've played in plenty of big arenas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of programs in our conference and play at their basketball arenas. So um, that stage isn't going to be any different than what we've dealt with all year. I think um, the, the, plot, the, the position we're in in this part of the year is the different part, right? It's we're, we're not on a win streak anymore. Everybody's clean slate. We're zero and zero. We are just... Um, in a situation where it's win or go home. So we haven't made it any bigger than it is. It's just our next match is Hawaii. And that's all we're talking about. Um, in practice, we're still talking about how we improve as a team and how we can be the best version of ourselves. And um, we're certainly preparing for our opponent, but I think a lot of the preparation is on our side of the net right now. Andy, go ahead. Hey, Julie, kind of, kind of looking big picture. Uh, at what point did you think this rise was kind of possible? I mean, did you start seeing signs of this at a certain point? I think there were two pivotal moments. I think the tournament at Georgia Tech when we beat Indiana and Oklahoma and then played Georgia Tech really tough even after a three hour five set battle with Indiana. I think that's when we looked at each other as a staff and we're like, hey, I think we scheduled okay. This wasn't too tough for this group. They were really um, up to the challenge and like the, the toughness of our preseason schedule. And then the first night at Florida when we went five and lost in that fifth set and the bounce back after that to win in five at their place to open conference play with a split against Florida, who was 17 at the time, um, really, really showed us that this group was capable of a lot more than I think they even thought. I mean, the goals we set early on in the season, we surpassed and we kind of had to reassess in season because we got past 10 SEC wins and we got past finishing eight through 10. So it was really cool for them to be able to get those goals and exceed expectations and reassess. How does that go? I mean, when you're, when you're kind of going into a season expecting one thing, I mean, how kind of cool is it to have, like, do you have like a team meeting halfway through saying like, oh no, like we can do a lot better than this. Like how, how do you kind of go about that when your, when your goals change so much? We have probably team check-ins every week where we talk about that kind of stuff and talk about um, the history and the records that we've been breaking. We don't really go into any weekends where we say, Hey, we've never, um, beat Florida, right? They've beat us 53 times in a row. We don't really talk about that at this point, but after we do something, we certainly celebrate the success that we had. So 
we did a lot of that, just kind of recapping. But uh, with this group, we talked about what they wanted and how we were going to get there and what standards were, we needed to have in place for them to get to that point. So I think this is a really um, driven group. They they set out the standards and the goals and the and the culture stuff. And we've been working on that for four years. So while we're having success this year in my fourth season here, this started a really long time ago. This has been years in the making. Theo, go ahead. Yeah, going off that, how much does the NCAA tournament appearance this season mean to players like Gabby Waden, Deja Robinson, Callie Minshew, the players who have been around this program as, almost as long as you have? Uh, well, the only two that have been with me the entire time are Gabby Waden and Deja Robinson. Um, and I think for them, they're the only two that have experienced a one in 17 SEC slate before. So they joke and we joke with our freshmen who think that winning is just super easy and you're going to get 16 wins in any SEC season. We're like, it's, it's really not that easy. Um, I think for kids like that, that were with us in the beginning, they were being told about our vision and we were trying to explain our vision and what it would look like for them. And now that vision has has happened and so it's been realized and so now it's like the vision has happened now what's next how do we sustain this success how do we continue this and make sure that this is not just a one-time thing where people go oh remember that year when Mississippi State finished second in the league that was just such a fluke like this is something that they understand we want to sustain for a really long time so I think for them it's just really been awesome to watch all that hard work that time that sacrifice um, really pay off and they, they just see it as the fruits of their labor. Yeah, how happy were they when that was announced? Can you repeat the question? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just saying, how happy were those two players specifically when you guys officially were announced in? They they were they were overjoyed. They've been excited. Just they follow the RPI pretty closely. So all year when we started to get past that point of being kind of a bubble team where we felt like, hey, we're in. We just have to keep beating people. I think that's when they said, okay, this is real. We're going to be playing in December. Um, and that's the reason we had a, a very intimate team only selection show party is because it was an emotional night for everybody. And um, as much as we wanted to open it up to our fans and our family and our friends, I think it needed to be kind of a team thing since we've been through so much together. Robbie, go ahead. Hey, coach, you mentioned that vision that you had. And as a coach, when you come into a program, you have that vision for your program. And I'm sure your vision was what's happening this year. But how do you sell that to, to players when you're recruiting when it hasn't been accomplished here before? As a coach, how do you sell that to those players that, hey, if we come in and work hard, we can accomplish this? It's kind of similar to my motto with serving, where high risk, high reward. So we, we sell the vision to recruits and we talk about it and we talk about how um, a lot of these recruits that we're going after could come in as freshmen and make a really big impact. Um, and leave the jersey and leave the program better than when they got here. So I think selling that vision, it takes a special person who's willing to say, yeah, I, I know it's gonna, I'm going to get beat up for the first two years and we might take a lot of losses, but I know I'm going to put the work in. I know the coaches are going to prepare us and train us and get us prepared to be a winning team. So I think there's a lot of recruits on our, our players now on our roster that kind of came in or went through the recruiting process with a chip on their shoulder um, that have a, I'm going to prove you wrong mentality. Um, perfect example is our little tiny outside hitter, Shania Cromarty. I think she gets over, she got overlooked during the recruiting process because of her size, but uh, she's a pint sized powerhouse and she brings it. And um, after her 25 kill performance at Florida, I think that's when she realized the impact she could have here and how her size isn't everything. And it just takes someone to believe in themselves and each other for us to reach those um, expectations and, and the goals that we set for ourselves. So for me, it's all about, I paint the picture. We have a clear vision. We talk about it with recruits. And if they believe it and they buy in and they trust us to get them there, they, they understand it's a calculated risk to come here. They understand they can make a huge impact and go down in the history books and do something pretty special. So I think that that kind of is alluring and draws people in. You've seen all this history happening uh, since you've been here and, you know, 20 plus wins. You're, you're right there in the, in the mix for SEC championship, make the subway tournament. But how cool was it to see a, a pack Newell Grissom the other day and see the fan base kind of starting to embrace this program? Because that that hasn't been there either in the past. That was I, unbelievable. I talked about it with Joel earlier on the podcast, but we've had a handful of fans that have really been with us since the beginning and, um, kind of have ridden out those losses, but for us to just really 
um, pick up speed. And I think really people were just, people have been talking about volleyball all season long. And I think it was one of those things where people had fear of missing out. So in our last match, it was like, this is your last chance to see uh, the first time we've been ranked in program history. This is your last chance to see us before a potential postseason uh, run where we'll make history again and people wanted to be a part of that so it was unreal that it also happened to be our senior night and we could celebrate some seniors and uh, it was unreal that it was you know our 25th win and we could finish off with a, with a great win over a good Auburn team and um, it was just I mean the support this year has been a huge difference maker there's been matches where we feel the energy shift and the fans um, really give us an extra boost and put us over the top and um, the kids feel that and it means the world to us. Andy, go ahead. Thinking back like four years ago when you arrived in Starkville, how do you kind of reflect on, on this journey just from, I mean, take kind of, kind of a taking a risk of, of trying to turn this program around that, that hadn't been a powerhouse even before you got here? Yeah, I, I mean, there was a handful of coaches in this league who told me to not take this job because I was going to take this job and end my career here. And um, I think that my story is a lot like some of our recruits. Like I knew this was a risk and I knew this was um, going to be really hard. It was going to be a really long, like really, it, we, I'd have to be patient with the journey, but um, I, I strongly believe that there was so much potential at this place and in this program, in this town, in this community for volleyball to actually be relevant here. And for, for the longest time, I just wanted us to be relevant in state and then regionally and then nationally. So I think I took a risk in coming and pouring my heart and soul into this program. And there was bumps along the way. And it's been um, a lot of sleepless nights and there's been tears shed, but it's, it's one of those things where if I didn't take the risk, I think I would have regretted it for the rest of my life. So I knew that this was an opportunity of a lifetime um, and it's been amazing and people have been supportive and we've really been able to thrive. I don't feel like we're just surviving. I mean, we're thriving in this program and volleyball in this state is really um, exploding right all at the same time. We have time for two more, so we'll go with Stefan and then we'll wrap it up with Theo. Yeah, Julie, just kind of want to talk, you know, specifically on the court. You know, looking through a lot of the numbers, you guys finish at, at the top of the SEC, but in a lot of the statistical categories, you're kind of fifth, sixth, seventh, kind of in the, in the middle of the pack there. Do, do you kind of see your team just being kind of spread out, have a lot of depth at, at various spots? And, and I guess what, what do you think Hawaii would kind of see in film looking at you guys? Great question. Um, I think we are really balanced. I think we have a lot of depth and I think that's probably why we only got one all SEC player. I think that we, we are just a good volleyball team and you can't pinpoint one or two superstar players. I think everybody knows Gabby Wayden is our X factor over there on the right side. But after that, who do you choose as your next best player? So yeah, statistically we're right in the middle and I think that's a good place to be. Um, when Hawaii watches us, I'm sure they'll see that we really like to set our right side a lot. We like to set our, our both of them, Jessica and Gabby, get a lot of balls over there. Um, I'm sure they'll see that we go pretty fast to the pins. And I, I would say they would look at us and not be overwhelmed by our physicality, but just notice how athletic we are and how fast we go. Um, I think we serve pretty tough. I think we ball control pretty well. I think Hawaii does those things really well too. So this is going to be a very um, interesting contest between the two of us they're a very different team than the teams we've seen in the sec so i'm i'm very intrigued to see how this goes theo go ahead yeah i was actually going to ask about hawaii i mean you said they were different from the sec what makes them different besides their skill in serving and ball control like you said they're they are just um pretty pretty mild manner there's nothing overwhelming about them they have a couple larger middles who are pretty physical but beyond that um, it's not like when we play, you know, the LSUs or the Floridas, there's, there's nobody six, 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 seven on the floor for them. So they are just good volleyball players. They, they're not tremendous athletic players who jump out of the gym. They're just really good volleyball players. They have a great coaching staff. They win a lot of games. Um, they keep it simple. There's nothing crazy or flashy about them. They just know how to play the game and know how to win. So, um, we've got great athletes and I think our IQ is getting better as we play, but um, we recruit a lot of kids that are still learning the game and learning all those nuances. So we're just trying to be better volleyball players, but they are really elite level volleyball players who are really fun to watch and just have a lot of finesse. All right, that'll do it. Thanks.